Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us for our virtual Sunday morning service here at the North Hollywood Church of Religious Science. We're so glad you could join us via Facebook Live or Zoom. So let's begin with our opening chant, God is all there is. So with that, let's join together in prayer. So I invite you to get still, to close your eyes, turn your attention inward, for us to recognize the truth of what we were just singing once again, that God is all there is, that there's this one life, one presence, one infinite love, intelligence, and creativity out of which all creation comes into being and that lives and moves and has its being through all that is, including me, including each and every person gathered for this virtual service today. I know that we all feel the impulse of God for a greater knowingness, a greater experience, a greater expression of itself through us. And I know that this service absolutely supports that intention, that God is present in every element of it. I know that we feel that vibration of God's love in which we are all interconnected and that inspires and motivates each and every person that is of service this morning. I know that we are uplifted and touched by God flowing through our music ministry, through Sam and Karen and our soloist Diane this morning. And I absolutely know that we hear exactly what we have come to hear today through Dr. Mark. That Dr. Mark is that vessel through which the word of the divine is spoken. And through that message, each of us awakens to some truth that was always there but that we have come to know today. And I know that that results in great healing and revealing. And so I give thanks for all the ways that God is flowing through our time together and the ways that we are blessed by it. And in gratitude, I release this word knowing it is so, I let it be, and so it is. And together we say, amen. Amen.
And so now, please join me in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And so now let's join in our congregational song. It's in every one of us. So now is our chance to take a few minutes just to get still, to get quiet, and to turn our attention inward and to meditate for the next five minutes. So I'm going to invite you to just get still in your body, to close your eyes, and for the next five minutes, just silently repeat the mantra, God is the love that I am. God is the love that I am. Just silently repeat that over and over, and I'll bring us out of meditation in five minutes.
All right, thank you, Diane. Thank you so much. Good morning, welcome. We are thrilled to have you here with us for virtual church today. You know, in the science of mind philosophy, we take the good <laughs> wherever we find it, making it our own so far as we are able to understand it. So I wanna share with you something from our science of mind textbook from our founder, Dr. Ernest Holmes. He said, the realization that good is universal and that as much good as any individual is able to incorporate into his life is his to use, is what constitutes the science of mind. So there is an ever availability of good, and as much as we are able to incorporate is ours. Now, we teach that spirit, God, the love intelligence of the universe is the origin of everything. That there's one life back of all that we see, and as it says in the scriptures, in him we live and move and have our being. This is why we are the sons and daughters of the Most High, because in him, in the Father, Mother, God principle, we live and move and have our being. So spirit can make no gift that we do not accept. And so the receiving is a spiritual and a mental act. It is not a physical act at first. Why? Because physical demonstration is the last level of demonstration. Things operate and cook in consciousness at, you know, at the conscious level, and then they move through our subjective level before they manifest in the outer plane as form or body or some external expression. So we teach that there is this one life back of all that it is one life, and we are all connected in this one life. So the important thing here is that any spiritual work you do actually contributes to the whole. So I had a realization, oh, just over a week ago, that if I was obsessively watching the news, that that was actually not helpful to the race consciousness. That was not gonna help any healing take place. So what I do, in fact, someone asked me last week, they said, well, where do you get your news if you're not watching the news all the time? And I said, I watch once a day. I watch once a day and I trust that anything else I need to know will come to me. And so, I, I, because if I watch more than once, you know, it's, it, it's like 9-11. You know, you start sitting, uh, standing, and then you're sitting, and then you're laying down, and the next thing you know, you're on the floor. And, and, and nothing productive comes from that. No good comes from that. So I watch the news once, and then I say, okay, that's it. Anything else I need to know will come to me by right of consciousness. And then that time that I would be spending watching the news and getting worked up and having lots of opinion and stuff, I take a few minutes and I pray. And I meditate and I bless everybody, everybody, everybody who comes to mind. Our teaching is that there is a seed of perfection that is hidden within, right? And Ernest teaches us that it is our ignorance of spiritual truth, that in the ignorance of spiritual truth, we have misused the highest power that we possess. Now, see, we've used that power to actually create a lot of the suffering that we experience. Mm. See, we do this because we're ignorant of our true nature. You know, like it says in the scriptures again, know ye not that ye are the sons and daughters of the Most High. We forget that we are connected, that we are emanations of divine consciousness, that spirit is and we are. So I love this idea. Ernest says that we are bound because we are first free. That means we are using our free will, we are using our choice in a way that does not support us in greater life and greater love. See, the way the law works is it works for us by working through us. And we are always in this relationship with spiritual law. It works for us by working through us, but we have to recognize that. Now, Jesus gave this wonderful teaching that it's done unto you as you believe. And that is right there, the law. It's done unto you as you believe. See, because our belief sets the limit to our demonstration of a principle. Now, principle is without limit, but our belief for everyone is somewhat limited. So it's never ever about 
as I used to think, well, God is not willing. God is. God is simply is, ising all the time, right? So it's not about God being willing, but more about am I truly receptive? Am I willing for things to change? Am I willing for things to shift? Am I willing to be different from the inside out? You know, ignorance from spiritual law does not excuse anyone from its effects. You know, so we're always, always setting the law in motion. And it's nice when we set the law in motion for greater good, for greater love, for greater peace, health, and abundance. And it's not so good when we set the law in motion for the lesser experiences. And how we do that, I think, in the most personal way is our self-talk on a daily basis. You know, we can talk ourselves up, we can talk ourselves down, we've all done it, you know exactly what I'm talking about. If you say things to yourself like, oh my God, I'm such an idiot and I never do things right, knock it off right now. Just knock that crap off. What are you, a child? You're in charge of your mind and nothing good comes from that. So just knock it off. There is no intelligent adult who wants to be around you and hear you say nonsense like that. If you're gonna say stuff like that, you need to go back to kindergarten. I'm sorry, forgive me. But this is, it's just crazy. Like We've all learned coming into science of mind that that, that derogatory, negative, self-talk, nothing good comes from that. You will never be more. See, this is the question I ask myself again and again. What is it? that if I do or watch or listen to will support me in being more. And you know, a lot of stuff does not support me in being more. By more, I mean more of my best self, more of what God is trying to experience and achieve and create by means of me. You know, so, and yeah, sometimes I just watch TV because I need to escape for a while. Mm -hmm. But I also recognize that I can't do that too long because that's not the best use of what spirit has given me to work with. That's not the best way to evolve my life and contribute to the healing of our planet, which I'm certain we all want to be a part of. Our self-talk has to be on the affirmative side of life. It's not that you are so great and everybody else is not. It's that we are all great because the greatness of God exists in every man, woman, and child on the face of the earth. So I think good is available to all of us. This is what our teaching is, that there is an ever availability of good. What does that mean? That means health, that means financial supply, that means love, that means creative expression, on and on and on. Good is available to us. And we don't have to do anything coercive to make that happen. Ernest says in our teaching, we do not will things to be done. Things are brought into being, not by will, but by, by the power of the self-assertive truth. So our job is to focus on that truth, to speak words of truth. First of all, I gotta tell you, speaking words of truth is enormously powerful. It is one of the greatest things we can do to change our mind. Not just think different thoughts, but to speak out loud. It's gotta be out loud. I'm telling you, out loud makes the difference. Because when you speak words of truth out loud, you know. I am filled with the light and love of God. God is my perfect health. All of my needs are met now and always. You know, say things like that to yourself. You can feel your energy rise up. It feels really, really good. The power of the self-assertive truth. When we speak truth out loud, it's like our, our conscious mind and our subjective mind and, and the preparation for form are all in perfect agreement. We could ask ourselves, how much is in my consciousness today that gets in the way? I mean, how much of my thinking is what's holding me back? How much of my thinking is keeping me small, keeping me limited, keeping me sick, keeping me broke? See, the law is impersonal, right? It's available and it works with mechanical accuracy. So, all right, so here's the law, and we have good without limit. God's good is available to everyone. It is without limit. So we ex our teaching, though, is so clear. We experience good and evil because we perceive a presence of duality. This is the thing. Any place where we see God and something else, you know, so we could say good and evil, uh, love and hate, abundance and lack. Wherever we see that disparity, that is the presence of duality. It's a belief in duality. Now, fundamental is to our teaching is God is all there is. It's all God. It's all God. 
right? So the movement towards spirit, I think for all of us, is to open our hearts and open our minds and accept and receive more of the good. The spirit of God is already within us. We must recognize that it's there and, and work with it in an intelligent way. How do we work with it in an intelligent way? By what we say to ourselves, by what we say out loud, by what we say to other people, by not giving our attention to what we don't want and giving our attention to more of what we do want. I believe the way it works is that as we move toward God, the infinite moves more toward us, right? It, it, but it's all about us making that effort. You know, years ago, Henry Ford said, if you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. Whichever way you think, you're right. And that right there is the law. That's how the law works. So often, we spend so much time telling ourselves, telling other people what cannot be, why things cannot be better, why the opportunity will not come around for us, why our ship will not come in. Well, for most people, their ship's not coming in because they haven't sent one out, if we tell the truth. You know? But for those who have sent a ship out, your ship absolutely is coming in. You know, it's not that, look, this is it. We're going to find God. We're going to have a very, imper a very personal experience of God, of the infinite, I believe, through the study of the letter of truth, right? So, so what this means for us, the practices we engage in, is that yes, I have to read words of truth. So whether you read the Science of Mind textbook or the Bible or something else that feeds you and inspires you and lifts you up every time you read it, read that. We have to meditate on a daily basis. And I'm just asking for a couple of minutes a day where you turn inward, close your eyes to the outer world and say, God, reveal yourself to me. We pray in an affirmative way. We practice thanksgiving because thanksgiving is a transformative practice and there is nothing like forgiveness to move your life forward. So out of our desire to know God in a greater and more personal way, we practice all these things. You know, people can know God through any, diff any of many spiritual teachings. All groups have their mystical component to them. But science of mind, I think, is, is a real assist for us in our search for a greater spiritual revelation. Now, I think that that light is already within us, and it's just seeking to come forward. It's just seeking to illuminate our minds and our bodies. So all we have to be concerned with is to know God in the right way, right? And our relation, and, and, and to maintain um, an ongoing relationship with that presence. So I remember years ago um, hearing uh, Mother Teresa speak at some, something, and she said, God is a friend of silence. And, you know, after a long time in Science of Mind, I realized that that makes a lot of sense. God is a friend of silence. So we want to take a little time, even if it's just uh, a couple minutes like we do in church. You know, Reverend Mark led us in five minutes of meditation this morning. That was not very long. And I can't tell you how much that does for our soul. That's like, you know, cool water on a, on a really thirsty day. Uh, where we know God, I believe, how that outpictures, where God is real to us, we will um, necessarily because we know God, we'll lose all anxiety, all fear, all of that. You know, all our needs will be met. That means we will have health, we will have supply, we will have creative expression, we will have abundant love in our life. Hmm? I think that as much as I want to see um, healing and uh, improvement in the world around us, I know that on an individual level, all I can do is bring about my own delivery from, from limitation thinking, from bondage thinking, uh, because that will really serve me. And to know the fact that although there appears to be duality in the world, or although there appears to be two, you know, there is really only one. There is really only one. So I believe that each and every one of us have within us right now the light of God. It's here. It's here. It's not like it's going to come. It's here right now. In fact, you know, the second coming, 
we believe in the science of mind happens in our own consciousness. You know, so if, if, if you are someone who's waiting for the second coming, you don't have to go far away for that to happen. It's going to happen right where you are. You know, uh, as we grow, I think, with every prayer, with every affirmation, every time we sit to meditate, every time we read some words of truth, I believe that what that does, as we grow, the world lifts up in consciousness. So don't diminish. You think, well, I'm just one person, and there's billions of people on the planet. But you know, think of it like this. It's, if you, the Bible talks about how if you put a little leaven into bread, it will affect everything. Or like if you put a little salt into something, it can completely change the flavor of something by adding that one little thing. And this is, this is like us. You know, our relationship with God has everything to do with the activity of our own consciousness. And I think in the days ahead, the activity of our consciousness has to be as high and higher than it has ever been. I think it's a really important for us to time, an important time for us to be spiritually grounded, for us to be spiritually proactive, for us to be speaking our word for love and peace and justice and all of these things. This is the time. This is the time. It would be really easy to be pulled down by what we see outside of us, by what we see on TV or hear in the news or read on the internet. But the thing is, we are a new thought church, and we always turn away from appearances and say, what is the greater spiritual truth here? Knowing that as we embrace that truth, the appearances heal themselves. So this is the work we have ahead of, ahead of us in uh, this very short period of time before us. So before we pray, I'd like to just share one little thing. I live in a world created by love. Love is what I am. All that I think and say and do, love is what I am. Before me, behind me, around me, inside me, love is what I am. I am filled, overflowing, and clear in my knowing is love is what I am. Let's pray. So we turn our attention inward this morning, recognizing that the spirit of the infinite mind, the mind of God, the mind of love, is right here. It surrounds us. It fills us. In fact, it is the most true, real thing about each and every one of us. We are emanations of the Most High God. And so in this awareness of our oneness with God and affirming again that we are all connected with each other on the unseen side of life, I know and accept a greater truth is revealed in our life, in our minds, in our hearts, in our bodies, in our world right now. So I claim for each and every one of us that there is healing at the spiritual level, the mental level, the emotional level, and the physical level of our being. I know the perfection of God is present in all of them. And that anything we have believed, any thought that does not serve us, any old way of being that ties us to a past that is not relevant to us today, we let that go. And I claim for each and every one of us that we are open, gracious receivers to the gift of God that's being made all the time. God is always trying to give greater good to us. And it's our jobs to be gracious receivers, to accept it fully and completely. We include in our prayer today our family members and friends, parents and children, all of those we love and hold near and dear, so many members of our congregation. We see them in our mind's eye, and we know that right where they are, God is present doing a perfect work, revealing health and wholeness and love, opportunity, abundance, creativity. We let our prayer be a blessing energy in the world that we live in knowing that from the source of God within us, all that emanates out to the world is an energy of love and peace and healing for all people, no one left out, all people everywhere. We bless our church. We bless all churches everywhere, synagogues, temples, mosques, ashrams, all paths to God. And we remind ourselves once again that the light and love of God surrounds our entire earth that we are blessed by it, that we are healed and uplifted. And so with an open, gracious, full heart, I say thank you, God, that this is the truth, 
thank you for everyone who's been with us today. I claim peace in our lives, peace in our hearts, peace in our world. And so it is, and so we let it be. Together we all say, amen. All right, we'll sing one time together. All right, I invite you to place your gift over your heart and we'll say our statement of giving together. From the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. Thank you very much. country tis of thee sweet land of liberty of thee I sing land where my fathers died Break the 
Thank you so much, Diane and Sam and Karen. That was a beautiful arrangement. I'm all verklempt. <laughs> huh. Well, once again, thank you for being with us this morning. Uh, if you weren't able to follow the link that appeared earlier on your screen, uh, you can still make donations over the phone. So first of all, if you'd like to call in to make a donation, we'll be here for 30 minutes after the service and we can take your donation over the phone by <clears throat> credit or debit card. And the number is 818-762-7566. Or you can go to our website, nhcrs.org, and then forward slash give, and that will take you straight to our uh, donation page. And uh, you can also text the word give to area code 818 Four five seven three four one nine, and of course you can continue to mail your checks in. However, you are choosing to make those donations. Thank you, thank you, for your generosity. Prayer with a practitioner is available after service on Zoom. So just tell the Zoom host that you would like to be connected with a practitioner for prayer, and we'll put you in a private breakout room for a one-on-one -on -one prayer session. You can also email your prayer requests to prayer at nhcrs.org or call into our church office and option four on the phone menu uh, lets you leave a voicemail message with your prayer request. And we check those voicemails and emails every evening and send them out to our practitioners so you'll be well supported in prayer. Wednesday evening, same, same pl uh, place on Zoom and Facebook Live. Uh, please join us for our Wednesday evening service. Meditation starts at 6.50 p.m. and then the service starts at 7. And my topic this week is Lost in Translation. <laughs> our virtual circle of healing via Zoom happens today at 1 p.m. We invite you to join practitioner Mary Catherine O'Hart for this virtual healing journey and enrich your own sense of well-being. You can find the Zoom link on our website. Feeding the Homeless, our love and kindness ministry will be feeding the homeless today. If you're interested in supporting this ministry, please go to our website to learn how you can be of support. Living a Course in Miracles via Zoom. This group, facilitated by practitioner Jeannie Laporte, will meet this Thursday from 7.15 to 9.15 p.m. All are welcome. And again, the link can be found on our website. Our Journey of the Heart 2021 campaign. Thank you so much to all of those who've signed up and turned in your pledge forms online. If you'd still like to do so, just go to our website. Uh, it's uh, nhcrs.org forward slash journey. And you can not only find the pledge form there, but tonight is the last night we'll have uh, the Karen Drucker concert up. If you didn't get to see that free concert that Karen did when we kicked off the campaign, uh, please take advantage of that. We'll be taking that down after tonight. So uh, it's worth it. <laughs> Practical mysticism class. Uh, I began this, this class last Tuesday, and there's still time to sign up. It's a really wonderful class. Great people have signed up as far as a really good class. Um, so it's on Tuesday evenings at 7 p.m. It's an exploration of mysticism and provides the framework for the student to live the mystical life here and now. So it's not just about studying mystics, it's about awakening that inner mystic in each of us. And it's open to everyone. It is a prerequisite for anyone who's interested in taking classes leading up to PRAC training. The tuition is 245, <clears throat> pardon me, if paid in full, 270 if paid in two installments of 135 each. And you can sign up on our website. Our 2021 goal sheets where you can write your goals for the year, send them into the church, and then we mail them back to you at the end of the year so you can see how your goals have manifested. Uh, those are available on our website. You can just download them, fill them out, mail them in to us with a, a self-addressed stamped envelope, and we will mail them back to you 
at the end of the year. A reminder that we have our Zoom virtual patio before and after all of our services, so if you want to uh, visit with your fellow congregants, you can still do that 20 minutes before and then after services. And our men's group meets every Sunday from 11 to 11.30 a.m. All men are welcome. And our Zoom meditation continues Monday through Saturday, 8 through 8.15 a.m. And for any information about what's going on or to sign up for our weekly blasts or monthly newsletters, just go to our website, nhcrs.org. Thank you again for being with us this morning. Let's wrap this up with a peace song. So please repeat after me. I'm at home in the heart of God. My life is anchored in truth. I can never be separate. I live in the consciousness of peace. I release all fear. I am living love. Amen. Thank you. Thank you.